A wide variety of vegetable crops can be attacked by powdery mildews, including artichoke, beans, beets, carrots, cucumbers, eggplant, lettuce, melons, parsnips, peas, peppers, pumpkins, radicchio, radishes, squash, tomatillo, tomatoes, turnips, and a whole host of other perennial and annual flowers. This disease is caused by many species of fungi depending on the crop. The cucurbits, which include all the squash, pumpkins, melons, and cucumbers, are usually infected by the following fungi, which are on the screen. Infection can occur between 50 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, with 68 to 81 being the optimum temperature range. And the disease does not grow very well above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Disease development is favored by warm weather, high humidity, and dew formation as we move on in the summer. High humidity tends to favor disease infection while drier conditions promote the colony growth, spore production, and also dispersal. The powdery mildew spores primarily live on plants, but they can also survive and overwinter in the soil, in compost piles, mulch, and other plant debris. Spores can be introduced into the garden by wind, insects, and splashing water. Once the disease starts, it can quickly spread from plant to plant. Within three to seven days after infection, colonies will be visible as tiny white superficial spots on leaves and stems. The spots will progress to become powdery white patches, which will expand to all portions of the plant. Severely infected leaves will eventually turn brown, exposing the fruit to sun scald. This sun exposure can affect the rind color of the fruit and the storage life of winter squash. So what do we do about it? First, we want to talk about cultural controls. And these are pretty easy to do. They're not very expensive. First of all, promote good air circulation by planting at the recommended spacing and also avoid applying excess high nitrogen fertilizers. Another option is to use slow release fertilizers on your cucurbits. Overhead sprinkling may reduce powder mildew because the spores can be washed off of the plants before they have a chance to germinate. But do this early in the day so that the leaves will dry off quickly before dark. If they stay wet for too long after sunset, you actually will increase the chances of getting the disease. If you apply a mulch around the base of the plants, this can reduce splashing of spores onto the bottom leaves, and this can help to delay disease onset. Another option, if you don't care about what varieties you plant, is to plant resistant varieties. Now, please note that resistant means that the varieties will develop disease more slowly. It doesn't mean they're immune. And then finally, which is kind of obvious, try to avoid planting any cucurbits into shady areas of the garden. Now let's talk about chemical controls. And for the most part, I'm only gonna be talking about organic chemical controls because that's what most people want. If you wanna know some of the other products you can use, write me a note in the comments and I'll respond. Before discussing specific products, let me briefly explain a couple of points. Now, when we talk about fungicides, we have two different groups. One are called protectants, and a protectant fungicide is one that prevents new infections from occurring. Applications start when the favorable weather for disease development occurs, but before the disease appears. Then we have eradicants, and an eradicant is something that can kill an existing infection. They need to be applied at the earliest signs of disease, and once the disease reaches the advanced stage, there's little you can do. Several low toxicity fungicides are available, including oils, sulfur products, biologicals, and bicarbonates. Mild to moderate powdery mildew infections can be eradicated by using horticultural oils such as safety size spray oil, sun spray ultra fine spray oil, or plant-based oil such as neem or jojoba. Another option is grow safe oil, which is a corn and soybean oil combo. The last one, the grow safe oil, has to be used within six months of opening and I'll have links in the description if you want to try to get these products. Now it's important to remember, do not use any oil sprays within two weeks after you've made a sulfur application or your plants may be injured. Also, if temperatures are above 90 degrees Fahrenheit or the plants are stressed, like from drought stress, avoid applying the oils. Some plants such as those with thinner leaves may be more susceptible to injury than others. For specific application details, Consult a fungicide label for more special precautions. Sulfur products have been used to manage powder mildew and other diseases, fungal diseases specifically, for centuries. 
but they're only effective when applied as a preventative. <clears throat> The formulation of one of those sulfurs are specially formulated with surfactants. So if you don't know what a surfactant is, it's a material added to the liquid to reduce the surface tension, which increases the ability of the material to spread and improves the wetting property. For instance, they have surfactants in dishwashing liquid. And an example of a sulfur product would be Safer's Garden Insecticide. Uh, however, you have to remember that sulfur can be damaging to some squash and melon varieties. You won't know that unless you try it because normally they don't tell you that on the package. To avoid injury, don't apply the sulfur when the air temperatures are really high, like 90 degrees again. Products such as sulfur dust require a little bit more care when handling since they're irritating to your skin and to your eyes and are limited in terms of the plants they can be safely used on. As a side note, some copper products are available for powdery mildew, but they're not seen to be very effective. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the biologicals. Biological fungicides such as Serenade are beneficial microorganisms formulated into a product that when sprayed on the plant destroys the fungal pathogen. The active ingredient in Serenade is a bacterium, and it's on the screen, it's Bacillus, I guess it's uh, Subtilis. The way it works is that it helps to prevent the powdery mildew spores from infecting the plant. This material needs to be applied every seven to 10 days and applications can be made up to the day of harvest. And as you would guess, it's non-toxic to people, pets, and beneficial insects, but it does not seem to be as effective as the oil or sulfur in controlling the disease. Of course, assuming that you apply those other materials properly. Now there's another product called Actinovate and its active ingredient is also a bacteria, which I'll put the name on the screen. What this does is it acts as a parasite of the fungal pathogens, specifically the hyphae, and it also excretes an antifungal substance into the root zone after it colonizes the root tip. Most of these products I've been talking about can be found on Amazon. They may not all be in your local garden center depending on the size and quality of your garden center. But Actinovate Lawn and Garden is available on Amazon and you use about a half to one teaspoon per gallon of water. There's another material called Echo Swing. That one you can't find on Amazon, but it can be found online. There's one more biological. It's called Regalia CG. It's a biofungicide also. And this also inhibits the fungal and it also inhibits bacterial diseases. And what it does, it uh, also helps to boost the yield for, on the plant in terms of its fruit. And one of the things it does is boost the plant's ability, like its immune system, to fight off uh, the disease. And again, all these products can be used up to the day of harvest without any problems. The last group are called the bicarbonates, and there are two specific ones, sodium bicarbonate, which you know is regular baking soda, and potassium bicarbonates. Now, sodium bicarbonate, or the baking soda, can be phytotoxic, which means it can burn the leaves of certain plants. The potassium bicarbonate products, you don't have to worry about it, but whatever you use, Coverage is essential, you, and that's true for most of these things, but specifically the bicarbonates. If you're gonna use sodium bicarbonate, use four tablespoons and two gallons of water, which is about what a regular compressor pump sprayer will use or hold. There is a material that's a potassium bicarbonate, it's called Caligreen, and it's a micro-encapsulated potassium bicarbonate, and you use that at about one tablespoon per gallon and check the label for any other details. We're talking about a seven to 10 day interval again, which is about average for fungicides. Although one of the things you have to realize, if something is only on the surface, then if you get rain more than a half inch, then it's washed off and you're gonna have to reapply it. That's why we say seven to 10 intervals. It doesn't last much longer than that. There's another potassium bicarbonate called Millstop SP. And you use this also at about one tablespoon per gallon of water on a seven to 14 day cycle. So this lasts a little bit longer. Also, you should read on the label, there's something called a re-entry period for different products that you use. And that means you shouldn't go back into the area until it's dry. And in the case of a lot of these, the re-entry period might be around four hours. So keep pets and children out of the area till it's dried. And, uh, but like I said, it's still low toxicity. Well, this was brief. I hope it was helpful. 
And uh, as a reminder, I do have links in the description. And if I can, I'm gonna put some cards in there too when I'm speaking of specific products so that you could go right to uh, Amazon. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. This is Gary, bye.